<clears throat> I'm going to attempt to do a video today for you on how to replace the pinion and spur gear in the rear differential on a Traxxas 16th scale model. And this video will cover all of them because they all use the same, it's the same setup for the uh, 16th scale to get to the differential. So the first thing you're going to want to take off is, is the uh, rear bumper assembly and that's going to be uh, like five screws. One there, there, there. And then in the back, you're going to have, you see a couple holding these tie rods right there. We'll take those off and remove the rear bumper assembly. Okay, so now that we've got the rear bumper assembly off, you noticed um, I went ahead and left these two screws in. A lot of times I like to screw the screw back in if it's not going to be an issue, if it's not going to be in your way. You screw it right back in and that way you're not, you don't have a bunch of screws laying around trying to figure out where they go or whatever. So that's a little bit of a time saver there. So after that, I'm going to go ahead and just do the next easy little part here and just take off this bottom panel. And basically what that's going to consist of is these eight screws right here. And that'll take this uh, protective cover off to reveal the drive shafts and other screws. Okay, now with these, the bottom plate off, um, you want to go ahead and take the... The tiny little set screws out of the drive shafts the front go into the front and the rear and just go ahead and move these drive shafts back out of the way a little bit if you notice um four of the screws that held this uh, protective plate on actually hold the motor transmission setup so after that that should pop out the opposite way there toward the top so okay now uh i ran into a little bit of a bit of an issue i just wanted to make sure i went over um, when I was taking this uh, drive shaft here off, the longer one, this part right here is supposed to slide this way onto this part of the drive shaft, and it's not, which basically means there's going to be a lot of debris inside here. So once I do get this off, it's important to uh, take this apart and clean it out and make sure it's moving freely when you put it back. Otherwise, there's going to be quite a bit of resistance going on there, and that's not good for anything. So now that both drive shafts are off, going to the front and rear, that, now that they're off, I'm going to flip this over. Then you're going to go ahead and unplug your leads going to your motor, and this guy should come right out, and uh, you want to go ahead and set that to the side. There's something that um, I figured might be important to some people, um, and I, I kind of almost didn't even cover this, but uh, I figured I'd just take a second. When you're un unplugging these leads right here, if you notice any of these leads are black or discolored, that's going to indicate that there's a loose connection going on, which will eventually cause a problem. So if that's the case, if you have one that's extremely discolored, Change all of them. Just change everything to new and uh, to avoid any kind of uh, future issues. All right, next I want to go ahead and just go ahead and get this little uh, aluminum plate out of the way right here. Um, and in order to do that, normally I would actually try to sneak it by, like pull this bumper down and sneak it by and just pop it off, but I'm going to go ahead and do it the right way. <laughs> And show you and basically you're just taking this uh, skid plate off the bottom here and that will give you access to take that aluminum plate off all right uh, another thing I wanted to bring up was uh, on my pre my other model 16 scale model which is over there the mini big slash um, I actually uh, did the differential on that one already so uh, this is my second differential and uh, the on that one there was a couple rocks that caught up, got caught up behind the pr actual protective shield um, that act that almost lathed right through the drive shaft. So if you're going through little rocks and everything, sand or whatever, once in a while you should take that cover off just to make sure you don't have rocks chewing right through those drive shafts. Or I think they even make a steel setup, um, which I. Eventually, I probably will go to. But if you notice now, I did take this protective, this little skid plate off right here to get to the uh, blue aluminum pl 
plate right there. So now we're going to pop that off. And after that, we're going to go ahead and take the shocks off. Just remove these screws right here. That screw for the rocker and get those out of the way. Now, as you can see, with the shocks completely out of the way, the shocks and the rocker arms out of the way, you've re re revealed a couple uh, screws right here. So we want to go ahead and take those out next. Um, after you take the screws out, this, this whole bottom part is going to drop off. And uh, then basically, what you want to do, th there's the set screws that are on the uh, drive shafts. Go ahead and remove those. Uh, just like uh, the bottom one also. This one that uh, leads to the rear diff. Go ahead and take the set screw out of that, remove that drive shaft, and then go ahead. Uh, and the same thing with all the drive shafts. It's got a little set screw back in the back, and you want to remove those, and um, that'll get us to our next step. So basically at this point with uh, removing those screws that I mentioned, um, your, your the whole front end will go ahead and just drop right off drop right away and um, I noticed it doesn't uh, take much to see that that's actually the spot on the spur gear that's that's eaten up right there right when I took it off um, so yeah that's it we've got the uh, uh, for sure it's the spur gear and the pinion that need to be replaced on it which uh, the test that, you, that, that I did, basically what I did was I held the front, I put the rear wheels on the ground, I gave it a little more juice, uh, a little bit of juice, <clears throat> and just kept slowly rolling it forward. And once you roll it forward, once it gets to that spot that's eaten up, it'll start clicking, click, 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 click. So that's kind of a telltale sign that it actually needs to be replaced. But visually, yeah, if you can visually see that the teeth are eaten up, then that is definitely your culprit. So our next step, now that we have uh, the, the ends of the drive shafts, if you notice, I took those off. And I'm not surprised that they were actually really hard to come off. They're supposed to just slide right off easily. Um, but they did not because of all the sand and whatnot. So before I put it back together, I have to, uh, get all the grit and whatnot and whatever off of the drive shafts and make sure they're sliding freely before I put everything back together. But at this point right here, when we've got this off, I'm trying to find, I think there's just one more screw. There it is. If you notice at the top right here, right there, there's a screw. And once you take that off, the, uh, the whole thing will just separate and you'll be able to get to your pinion and your spur gear. Now if you notice, okay, I've, I've got this screw out right here. If you notice, the pinion has two bearings on it and it's just sandwiched between the two cases, the, uh, the, the differential cases. So once you take that screw out, you could separate it and you'll notice it's just sandwiched in there. And then uh, slide that apart like so. That, that'll just pop right out. And then uh, there you are with your differential. That'll probably just pop out too. But if you know, I wanted to show you before I pulled it out. If you've run these things as hard as I do, don't be, uh, you probably need to expect it for there to be this much wear and uh, grease and debris in there. But that's just a part of the game. I like to, uh, I like to run my RC cars. I don't know about you, but I, I tend to just turn uh, turn everything on and hold the... I take it and I jam the, the throttle, and then I just turn the wheel, and, and basically that's how I drive. But um, I'm going to take this out, and uh, we'll get to the next step. Now that I've got everything cleaned up, I can actually, I can actually see the screws now. <laughs> there's three of them right here, here, and there. And um, there's the spot right there. There's about four gears that are kind of laid down, and um, there's the pinion also. I'm trying to get in, see if I can't get a close up on that. No. Anyway, but yeah, the pinions wore out too. Um, don't ever replace just the spur gear, because uh, this pinion's gonna have slack in it, and you're gonna end up chewing through this pinion with the new spur gear. 
So once you take those three screws off, the gear part will come off. This stuff will, will stay. You're just replacing the gear part of the differential. Right after, um, when you take the three screws out, like I just showed you, you're going to want to just pop the two ends off of this, this gear right here, and it'll reveal your other three little gears inside the differential. Okay. Now what you're going to do is take these three gears and put them right, right there in your new one. Okay. And then you just start assembling everything just like you just took it apart. Um, this particular part number is uh, 7079, <clears throat> which 7079 is going to include your pinion and your spur gear. Um, the first differential that I did, I replaced the whole differential, which I didn't realize that you could actually uh, just replace this part of the gear, which it's cheaper. It's uh, quite a bit cheaper to just replace this gear, which, like I said, this package includes the pinion and the spur gear, but none of the insides or the, the cap ends. And that is part number 7079. And one thing I wanted to mention that this... Uh, this whole this whole thing take from from when I started to basically the the, the end to where I'm replacing the actual part that uh, needs to be replaced. I've used two different Allens, two different uh, sizes. Um, so I want to give it uh, props to Traxxas on that because that does make it a whole lot more convenient when uh, you're only having to deal with a couple different sizes. So that's it. From from here on, you just Go in exactly reverse order from what you took uh, when you took everything apart. I, I definitely want to mention again how uh, I want to stress it that you need to clean these things out. The drive shafts, the out, outside and inside of the drive shafts. If they don't move freely, because even though they only move a tiny bit in and out, they really don't move that much. They have to move that amount, otherwise you're gonna, things are going to start binding up in there. And you're going to notice that... Uh, uh, it just, it's going to, it's going to be a loss of performance. So, um, but that's it. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Um, go out there and get, work on your, work on your RC cars, fix them, get them done. Thanks for watching.